Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Good Guys Talk Back, episode 198, and the start of season five of this podcast. Unbelievable. Uh, I am Nick Morowski. You can find this podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcasts. Uh, we've also got a YouTube channel, so check that out and subscribe. Just search Good Guys Talk Back. Uh, we're on Twitter at Good Guys TV, and we've got a Facebook a fan page. I uh, really appreciate you uh, you coming back, uh, listening to some White Sox chatter. Hopefully these conversations uh, continue in your world, friends, family, coworkers, other Sox fans. The winter meetings are underway. A lot to get to uh, since the last time we discussed. Uh, bringing in my co-host, longtime friend, uh, dear, dear, good friend, uh, diehard Sox fan. Welcome to season five, Pat Hester. Uh, season five. It's hard to believe. I, I can't believe that we're, we are uh, lifting the lid on season five, but congratulations to you. You've had a, a busy couple of weeks here, a lot of fame and pomp and circumstance <laughs> in your life. Newspaper articles sure. about you called out on on very popular afternoon drive sports talk shows. It's it's amazing, but more amazing than that is Daryl Boston is back, uh, <laughs> and I'm excited to take the next 55 minutes to talk about Daryl Boston, Nick. <laughs> We're going to get to this coaching staff that has been finalized for the uh, 2023 season. There's also a, an initial promotional schedule, Pat, as I'm sure you have seen and started to circle the dates of all the giveaways. You'll oh, be you know, attending. you know, I have. I can't <laughs> wait to stand in that three hour line yeah. to get my uh, ballpark uh, windbreaker giveaway. I don't. Well, I think you're going to come to the Hawaiian shirt giveaway with me this year. Why? Because they that, don't fit that, me. I, that, I mean, <laughs> what, what the hell am I going to be standing in line for? A gosh darn Hawaiian shirt? Oh, but this one, the print actually. I'll get the first good. two buttons buttoned uh -huh. at the top, and the next it'll just be flowing. Yeah. <laughs> It's be like a cape. You do not need to button a Hawaiian shirt, though. They're just, oh, you know, it's a, Nick, every it, shirt that goes on my body needs to be buttoned. There's nothing that needs to be. <laughs> everything needs to be covered. At all here's times. the plan, though. You'll have a good guys talk back T-shirt underneath the Hawaiian shirt. It's, oh, I yeah. think it's going to be a, a fashionable okay. look. Well, it's, I can't it's wait. It's the for look you to dress of the me. summer. I'm, I will dress you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We'll, we'll have a tailgate and I'll get you all, <laughs> uh, all gussy. Lay out my clothes for me. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, we are. Uh, we are in the start of season five here folks uh, if you've been with us from the beginning man uh, let us know somehow and i know there's some of us out there there's some of you out there and it's crazy uh here we are 198 episodes we're, we're starting our fifth season uh, this podcast started uh, during the winter meetings of 2018 and that of course was the manny machado uh, Bryce Harper off season sacks were were all in on both of those and and I, and I don't even want to remind you of what we ended up with but that was an off season filled with anger angst uh, and and we're kind of still there right now we're, we're, <laughs> we've we've gone full circle we've been there for forty one years Nick wow. we, we've, why, we, why we, would have changed we've we've gone this whole thing and now we're back to uh, winter meetings where uh, there 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 needs to be holes that are filled but Khan has not said what he did several years ago. Uh, we're going to be in on all these different guys. Money's going to be spent here and there. It, it, very careful with his words, a lot of internal options, uh, the trade market. Um, Sacks have been active in December. Uh, you know, they've won the off season mm -hmm. uh, several times. It has got us absolutely nothing. I mean, zero uh, ALCS appearances, zero World Series appearances, after winning those off seasons, uh, you know, we're going to commemorate the six year anniversary on December 6th of the Chris Sale trade. Uh, again, what has that got us? Uh, one division title and two playoff wins, not series, but wins. Uh, but the Sox have tried, you know, in, in, in different opportunities. In their they, way. They've in tried their way. In their exactly, way. Pat. Yeah. You, you're saying it 100%. Yeah. They, they do it their way. They do it on Jerry's terms. Uh, but December has been active. I don't know what to expect, Pat, from these winter meetings. You know, I'm hearing... Michael Conforto, of course, you oh you, you hear, you know, oh, that name man. constantly mm -hmm. comes up. It was mentioned in a jo Jim Bowden athletic article a few days ago. Of, you know, that would be a very White Sox way to do things. You know, of course, a, a very, you know, a team friendly deal, a cautious deal. Uh, 
but he didn't play at all in 2022 had shoulder surgery but he's a lefty bat pat and a corner outfielder yeah. so there you go well what will ever happen first will jack peterson be a white Sox, <laughs> or or will michael conforto or yeah. neither a, a mm. b or c we should put that out as a poll question sure that's yeah. a great poll question by the way what happens first yeah. I, I mean, Cody Bellinger, that's a name that a lot of folks are high on. Um, you know, I, I just, I'm not too enamored with uh, uh, Nimmo. Okay. I can kind of maybe get, get behind that one is uh, uh, I, I have a weird feeling. It's going to be Conforto. It just feels like the white Sox way to, way to do that, especially with the Clevenger deal. You want to talk about Sox love question marks. Like let's mm. bring a question mark in. <laughs> Let's let's see if we can figure this out. You got Daryl Boston still helping out in the outfield uh, with with outfielders. He can mm -hmm. he could completely reimagine Conforto. It seems like a great fit. Uh, yeah, I, I just made me think of the Riddler all of a sudden. I don't know why. I just <laughs> imagine Rick Hahn in a full Riddler like question mark suit. That's fantastic. I what if he showed up to San Diego at the winter meetings just in a in a Riddler costume? It's just like, <laughs> nobody knows what we're going to do this <laughs> offseason. Are we know, spending money? Are we trading? Who knows? I, I'm the I, Riddler. Again, I just go back to, one, I don't believe anything anybody ever says at a press conference and in uh -huh. front of the media. And when he says, you know, we're, we're not, we're not, we're, we're not going to throw money at this. I, I do really believe that. But I don't know. I think that I think Rick Hahn is really irritated by when things get leaked, really irritates him. Like, you know, he tries to keep things so hush hush. And, and I get that for, I don't know, for whatever strange reason, he doesn't like to have things out there in the media with their wheelings and their dealings, because I feel like that most of the time, it, you know, they fall on their face. And they look really bad like they have in the past. So they like to keep it quiet. Right. I just, I still can't sit here and believe that the only way that they're going to make this team better is via the trade, because I don't ultimately think that uh, signals to you or I or, or anybody else, this, this team is really ready to win. And then their window, I still believe he thinks that they're in this window of competitive, you know, uh, play, right. Where they're going to be competing for, division and and al central or uh, you know american league championships and and hopefully going to the world series i think he believes that because this is the team that he built this is the team that is kind of has his fingerprints all over it and i think he desperately wants this to succeed for him and i i just i just have a hard time believing that it's gonna be like well we can we can trade this piece away and these pieces away and all of a sudden we're gonna be better i just don't know how how any trades are going to make them go from where they're at now to, to where they want to be. Do you know what I mean? It just feels I like do. you're just kind of treading water in that way. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, we've been, we've been dealing with this, you know, we've been questioning like, why, why are these lukewarm, these tepid deals? Like why not actually bring the thunder? And if Jerry Reinsdorf was not going to just spend and spend with Tony La Russa at the helm, his manager of choice, mm -hmm. Why would he say, "Yeah, Rick, you can you can spend more money than I wanted"? Now that you've got your your boy Pedro Grifol in, uh, go ahead, like really, really fill those needs and, and make this work. You know, you got mm -hmm. your way. You hired him. Yeah, I'll help you out, and I'll and I'll really make splashes. I I, I just I don't see it. Uh, you know, there was a, an athletic article that you folks maybe you read, um, Ken Rosenthal. Uh, highlighting 10 people in baseball where, where this winter meetings, uh, this stretch here this week is critical, like for their job, for their team. Uh, they mentioned uh, in the article, you know, some players, uh, Hal Steinbrenner was mentioned with the Yankees about the whole Aaron Judge situation. Jed Hoyer was talked about with the Cubs, a few other baseball operational guys, a few other general managers uh, that kind of are on the hot seat. Like this is important. And I really thought, Pat, that Rick Hahn was going to be mentioned in the article because he finally got his guy, Pedro Grafal. Here's a guy that this was his hire. Sacks have a ton of holes to fill to really, to really flesh out this roster and, and get them back into an AL Central title situation and beyond. How is he going to do that? He's got to be creative. 
He's got to set Grafol and his staff up for success. This is a big offseason. But he was nowhere to be found in the article. And really, ultimately, you know, it's I'm not terribly surprised because the question we always talk about as Sox fans, and, and it happens around this time of year, how does Rick Hahn have a job? How does he still have a job year after year? And you have to ask another question of, well, what is Jerry Reinsdorf's real expectations for the Chicago White Sox? It's in, it's it's all interesting, Nick. And I always go back to one. You know, last year the Sox got a lot of love and pub. They were this. They were a sexy pick. They were this up and coming and exciting team. And it's this, basically the same team as it is this year, right? Minus uh, Jose Abreu, this team really isn't that different. You know, you, you rewind to where we were sitting last year at this time, and we were really pumped and excited. There was a lot of articles, positive things being written and talked about, about this team and where they can go and Passons picking them to represent the AL and the, and the uh, world series and, and a lot of people's picks to win the world series. I mean, it was a, a different time and you fast forward to today. Not much is different. Not much has changed. Yeah, you've lost Jose Abreu. Outside of that, this team is pretty much the same, right? So what has changed? The, the, the only thing that's changed is that, that there was a lot of guys that regressed and, and a lot more injuries. And this team is no longer sexy. It's no longer fun to talk about. There was a lot of people, including us, that were down big time on Tony La Russa, And we've become, yet again, an afterthought. So when things are written about teams of, of who's got to do this and who's got to do that, what get what teams get mentioned? The teams that get clicks, right? Mm-hmm. We got to talk about the Yankees. We yep. got to talk about the Cubs. We got to talk about this and that. And the teams that are actually interesting for people to actually click and read. You know, they're not writing these things for you or I. So that's why I think that that the Sox don't get mentioned. Should mm-hmm. they get mentioned? Absolutely. Because you and I know that, you know, well, maybe not because – you know, other people probably know that Rick Hahn is never in jeopardy of losing his job. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the, there's actual people that have to be accountable for their actions in other organizations. And Rick Hahn doesn't. So why would you waste your 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 typing on a Rick Hahn that doesn't matter what happens this year? He's going to be back next year. Yeah, that, that's that is a, a great point when you boil it down is why why waste uh, print and space in this article? Because this this guy and Kenny Williams, uh, you know, they're just doing whatever the owner really wants, which yeah. is just to kind of, you know, seem competitive, make a couple moves here and there. You know, we'll, we'll extend a couple guys with, you know, with the, with early deals like they've done. We'll make it look like we're really trying here. We'll say all the right things. But at the end of the day, honestly, I don't think Jerry Reinsdorf cares too much about the standings. If yeah. this team makes money for him, great, which it has. It has the white have the White Sox continued to grow and be worth more and more over the last 40 plus years or whatever he's been owner? Yes. That to me at the end of the day is the important thing. So if his expectations are like, eh, you know, whatever we can do, we can do within my little constraints that I've created financially. Great. Um Jer- uh, Han Kenny, you guys are safe, you know, yeah. because look, look, you're just doing what I want you to do. Yeah. And it's, I don't know why I just wrote this down and it's starting to make me feel like, uh, and, and I'm going to butcher the quote, but you know, wasn't it Bill Wirtz, you know, the, you know, now deceased ex owner of, of the Chicago Blackhawks that, you know, famously said Stanley cups cost too much money. Mm. Right. Yeah. Does, does that and, not feel like what we have been, uh, you know, I don't want to say cursed with uh, over the past, you know, whatever, 40 years or whatever Jerry's been in in control. It's I think he looks at it and goes, World Series kind of costs a lot of money. And he had that pop up win in 2005 that that had everybody organically, including him. And it's like, this is the perfect thing. Why can't we just do that again? Why Mm -hmm. can't we just win by accident again? And, And I'll look like a hero. Yeah. And, and I don't I don't really have to spend a lot of money to to win a World Series. I just proved it. Yeah. And there and there are teams that are the complete opposite. And we've seen some of it happen just recently this past weekend with Texas just throwing just unbelievable money at Jacob deGrom 
free agent starting pitcher. Numbers that we as Sox fans, I, I can't fathom. Like I can't fathom those contracts. Mm-hmm. Like that just is like that melts my brain knowing that there are teams. And this is not the first time the Rangers have done something like this. No, and it hasn't worked out for them either, though. So don't forget it, it that. Hasn't, it doesn't guarantee but, you anything. But, and they've, but, they've enjoyed a lot of years in the cellar, even with having a very high payroll. Ex- exactly. And, and and I wonder, though, if, you know, the fan base, would, does is, does that do they appreciate that at all? You know, do they say, well, at least our team is, is trying and they're, and they're going after guys and they're making splashes and they're trying to compete? You know what? The thing about the Rangers is it seems like now they spent a lot of money last year too. I, and I could be wrong. I I don't have it in front of me and and somebody could probably tell me, you know, I'm a complete moron, but it didn't seem like they had a lot already on the team and they were just kind of going, this is our all in move to push us over the top. It was like they had nothing and they spent a lot of money and they, they still probably have a lot of holes and they're going to try and buy their way through that situation. I would much rather be, uh, you know, the the Braves or the Cardinals of the world where you have a machine. You have this organization from top to bottom. Your minor league system is fantastic. And then you don't have to spend, you don't have to be the highest spending team. But when it comes time to sign and go get a guy like an Arenado and put him at third and get Goldschmidt and put him at first, you can go out and do those things because you have a great player already at a certain position and you know, you already have one or two behind that person to replace them when they are going to cost too much. So you can go out. And that's what I was hoping the Sox would do this year because they had a lot of their, this past year, they had a lot of their young talent already signed that you're really high on. And you really had a couple of glaring holes and it just seemed too simple to go. Now's the time to go spend a little money. And yeah. you have to fill it that way. And you can throw money at that one position. It feels like yeah. the like Texas has a lot of <laughs> holes and it's like, they just keep throwing money out like a, you know, like a, a like a crazy oil tycoon and shooting guns off in the air. Mm-hmm. And that's how they do business. I would also much rather be like the other team in Texas, the Astros who have, you know, everything you could want. And they're like, okay, well, we're missing this. We'll just, you know, buy off the top shelf here and we can buy off the top shelf here. Well, that, we can that, let this person go and we're going to replace yeah. them with this person in our, in our, you know, in our organization. The, some might say the three years, 60 million for a Bray was insane. Like it is gonna, insane, you, by the way, it, it is insane. It, but, it's, I, but that's like, that's like, we want to win and repeat as championships. Crazy. Like, I don't care if this is crazy money. This mm-hmm. is the guy we want. Mm-hmm. We need him on this team. We have targeted him earlier in the off season. He's our number one focus. We are going to get him. He is not going to say no to us. And that's the type of crazy, I guess, or the, or the rationale I was hoping the White Sox had that capstone moment where we had this youth, we had these young guys, they started to come up into the system. You know, we might've made some trades here and there. And then there was like, we need a guy or guys it might seem weird to other teams. We might overpay, okay? But th- we want th- we don't want to get into a bidding war. We don't want mm-hmm. th- we don't want this to drag out. We want somebody. We are going to fill that hole. Yeah, uh, and, and that's what I was you know was really hoping for. I mean, you look at Degrom's deal and, and and some of these other deals that maybe Rodon gets and whatever Verlander is going to command. And it, it, this happens every single season, right? Where mm-hmm. we sit on the sidelines as Sox fans, just kind of in envy of what teams spend on uh, starting pitching. And yep. I, what, what is the biggest contract to a starting pitcher in White Sox history been the Danks extension, you know, uh, five years, yeah. 65 million. Uh, you know, that, that's, <laughs> it's not going to cut it. No, it, it, again, they, they continue to do, operate the way that they're going to operate. And, it's, it's just, it's just unfortunate. And they're just hoping for these little once in a while successful seasons. And, and then maybe, you know, they're, well, you you never, everybody's got a chance when they make it to the playoffs, we can just make the playoffs in this weak division. I'm sorry to tell you that the guardians are going to be a, a formidable team again this year because of the way that they're managed and the way that their players, uh, you know, go about, you know, attacking the game. I guess my hope is that, you know, we'll see what, what Pedro has in store and in the way he can motivate 
this team and get him going in the right direction. Maybe we can untap the players that we thought we were having going into last season where we were really high on these guys. And even with the moves that were made that were very, you know, you scratch your head and were suspect when you talk about the Josh Harrison move and, and bringing in, uh, I can't even remember his name now, the, the outfielder that came from the Dodgers that didn't want any, didn't be, didn't want his, AJ uh, Pollock, yeah, yeah. AJ Pollock, you know, those moves and you're like, uh, all right, they're, they're guys and we've got enough guys to overcome that and that's fine, but they can, they're, they're big league players. Let's, let's go. Um, again, I'm just hoping that, you know, maybe just maybe that the, the guys that we were counting on this year to be all-star level and, and even superstar MVP level type guys, when you're talking about Robert and Aloy can live up to, to those potentials this year. And that's what, that, that's all I think we can hope for, because I don't think that we're buying on the top shelf with any free agents. Well, every team is hoping for that, right? Like we're not the only team that had injuries that are saying, boy, if some of these guys can just get back to accustomed levels, like we are really going to be, uh, you know, uh, having a fun season for most of the summer. We might be able to capture a division title. So if everybody else is playing that game, hoping that their current roster, their internal guys come back to accustomed levels. Well, what puts us over the top? You know, it's bringing in new talent, right? Mm -hmm. It's like making a splash and adding to the guys that you hope, uh, you know, return to the back of their baseball card, as everybody says. Uh, yeah. You know, do so you find yourself like I, I was, uh, I was up early one morning and I know you're, you, you're on about an hour of sleep yep. in your life. So I know you're up all the time. I am. Uh, and I'm, I'm laying in bed and I'm having this like daydream to myself. And I just thought, no, nah, this is crazy. But I just thought, what would it be? What would it be you and I be talking like about one day uh, on, on our show? If, if the Sox somehow signed an Aaron judge, we'd be uh -huh. on here going, how many home runs were our outfield hit between Judge and Robert and Aloy? That's like a thousand home runs. We'll never lose a game. And I have these crazy thoughts about what if we did this? And then I have to talk myself yeah. back into reality and go, you're, you're, "There's no, first of all, there's, there, that would never happen. Second of all, I, 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 somebody would get hurt anyway. And and well, you, yeah, you, and somebody would they you know Judge would get would, seventeen home runs yeah. that next year, or something like that. <laughs> he, he as soon as he he would get called out, you know, on on opening day to walk out to the to you know the first third base line and and wave his cap and and say hi to everybody, and he'd pull a hamstring, leaving the dugout. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean you're you're. You're hitting on two different uh, paths there: uh, the often injury path and the the fan is the fantasy land. I mean, and then and I, I'm on a a little like just message thread with other hosts from you know different locked on you know shows, and it, it, I just have to sit back and just you know it's sitting on the sidelines as these yeah. other hosts you know start actually dreaming up. Well, what could a pitch for Judge be like? Where could Verlander go? And, you know, the the, the Sean Murphy trade, you know, like somebody's going to land these different guys. And and I just have to sit back and be like, well, you know, Clevenger uh, was an interesting move by the Sox. And, uh, you know, <laughs> apparently uh, Ethan Katz is high on him and uh, can completely turn things around, you know. And I wasn't he high on Vince Velasquez, uh, too? And that went horribly yeah. wrong. So, um, you, you kind of just have to talk yourself into this excitement. And, you know, when, yeah. when Dallas Keuchel was signed, you and I, I think just hours after that signing, or just maybe a few minutes after the signing, we did an episode. Yeah, and that did. was exciting. That was yeah. wow. The Sox have you know bolstered their their staff. They went after a guy that maybe wasn't not option A or B necessarily, but still former Cy Young, like lefty, like pedigree, comes from a championship yeah. uh, culture and. Uh, it, it just went a different way. Um, I don't know what that would be like, Pat. I mean, I'm trying to think like that Adam Dunn signing, was that a big thing in 2010 when, when we made a huge splash and we got Adam Dunn to answer a, a completely inept DH spot uh, the previous year? Uh, I think I was pretty excited. Like, wow, like this guy's a monster home run hitter. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're looking bat. at 45 home runs, and that's what that's what excited us. And uh, 
Boy, he couldn't hit his way way out of no. a wet paper bag. He did, I think, homered on on opening day in Cleveland, uh, and I think you and I were sitting at um, at, at a bar together watching. I'm sure that we game. were. I yeah. think we were. Yeah. So, I guess I just wonder what level of you know what level of interaction the Sox will have during the winter meetings. Like, what will it be like? Are they just going because they're required to go? <laughs> <laughs> like, is there something that says you have to go to this meeting I'm here for the buffet? The pool is really yeah. great. I mean, do uh, they get like a goodie bag with like a pen and a notepad and, and like, uh, like does uh, Han have to bring back something to show Reinsdorf? He actually yeah. went like, yeah, bring, you, me your, you got... bring me your badge from the convention. Just so I know uh, you were there. Uh, you know, I, I mean, they're going to kick tires on guys. They absolutely are. Uh, and some of the deals that are going to be done will because conversation started now and there might yeah. be something that materializes later in December or in January. Uh, I, I don't, I just don't have that. We're conditioned as Sox fans to not believe a big splash is going to be made, especially during this off season, boy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm so, you know, I, I'm so jaded and, and cynical because of that, you know, Manny Machado, Bryce Harper off season that this podcast was, was founded. It was founded on the foundation of just, you know, vile, uh, acid tongue conversations of how Reinsdorf uh, played, played that whole situation his way instead of the Manny Machado way. Manny Machado told everybody, this is what I want. I want the guaranteed money. This is the deal I want. And Reinsdorf tried to play it his way and then got his guys to talk about how, well, in theory, it would have been a better deal uh, for Machado if if this, 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 and this happened. You know, so like we, we really made an effort. You made an effort, but like play the game, yeah. okay? Don't go into something you know, knowing what the situation is and trying to do it the Jerry Reinsdorf way. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I really, I want you to go and, hey, if, is that how much it costs? I'm going to pay that. Yeah. Don't try to like, you know, this isn't, uh, you know, a swap rama type of thing. And, and that's what he tries to do. Yeah. Is there anything that'll happen this week, Nick, that will shock you? What would shock me is if a guy like Lucas Giolito gets traded, um, you know, th that would shock me. Uh, if Tim Anderson gets traded, you mm -hmm. know, those are a couple names that have been tossed around. I don't know how reliable those sources are, you know, at all. Uh, Lucas Giolito, there, there's some smoke with that. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like the fact that they're not going to most likely extend Giolito after this year, he'll be a free agent. They might want to get something for him. Are you going to do it in mid year at the trade deadline? Mm, I don't know. Uh, I, that would be weird. I think you run too much risk there of him absolutely. continuing to pitch the way he's pitched. And, you know, I just saw some, saw some interesting things about, you know, him, uh, and, and Max Kepler, it's like trading mm -hmm. in the division, I think would be, would, would be really interesting. And I don't know if that's something that I'm all that interested. I in. have no interest in Max Kepler. I, I heard a Lucas Giolito to the Rays for Brandon Lowe, the second baseman, mm -hmm. which checks the box for sure. Um, I don't know if I'm like over the moon for Brandon Lowe. And then you're like, well, what are you going to do with the innings that you lost on Giolito? Are you plugging that with Davis Martin, Jimmy Lambert, Ronaldo Lopez? You know, the Sox are gonna, aren't going to go pay for pitching to replace right. Giolito. Uh, I think you're, you're dealing with a new problem. And that's my whole issue is like the why borrowing from Peter to pay Paul mm -hmm. just go and buy. You can spend. Why are we trying to do all these little you know, uh, you know, just these these different types of moves and deals that you're like you're moving everything from one side to another to try to balance it out when it's just like go get what you want already yeah. and end it. And and I think it's interesting you had mentioned Tim Anderson. It, it, Tim Anderson in the span of a year, it, it's like the what is the the old saying the the roses off the bloom or whatever that's that's called it. I've heard, I've heard just, just around the office. Is that uh, right? Did I say that right? You know what? You're coming up with some things tonight that, I mean, normally we're not very current with the bloom is off the rose. Sure. Is that, did I, I say I Whatever. actually not, yeah. either way, uh, just like he's not really well liked in that locker room. Mm. And it's like, you know, well, it's just some grumblings I've, I've heard and some people not real high on a Tim Anderson, which, 
you know, I can understand in some ways, you know, Tim is probably not the sharpest. He's all grown uh, up, man. That, yeah, I know, but he's, he's a not different sharp, player than he was years ago. He's not the sharpest fielder out there in the world. And, and he does have a, a very extensive injury history, right? I don't think he's had many years where he hasn't had an injury that has impacted how many games he's played. So he's not always available, but he is a, a hits machine. So is he an attractive piece to move? I don't know. And, and then again, but you, we just mentioned it before. And I mentioned it earlier in this podcast, you trade things away, then you have to fill that hole again. So how are you filling it? Well, you, you, you would, if you did that and you're like, look, we can get a ton back for uh, Tim Anderson right now. And we, and we could really set ourselves up. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to spend a ton of money for Trey Turner or Xander Bogarts. And we know already we're going to spend a bunch of money on a free agent shortstop because they're out there right now. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll spend the money. This will be our big move and we'll trade Anderson and we'll set ourselves up, you know, for a little while. There's no way that's happening. You know, that, yeah. that's the thing is uh, there needs to be a, and that would be an interesting direction if they did that, um, which you know, that, that would surprise me. But when you look at everything that's going on right now and this Grafol era and the coaching staff, and, and I believe this team, this 2023 team, uh, will have a, a lot of talent. We are, of course, in that hope and accustomed levels. But they will be better prepared. I, I think they, the Sox are trying to figure out how do we, you know, like we've got a lot of eyes now with this coaching staff. We've got a lot of eyes in the in the hitting world. We've got a different approach. You know, Grafol has been able to surround himself, um, I think, with people he trusts, he has a history with, that he has respected. We will talk about one name in a moment that is just, it still just bothers me a little bit of why he's still sticking around. But, uh, you know, does it mean, though, you're going to get the results? You know, you still have to have the talent uh, all around to try to get some of the results, unless you're just playing the long game with, with Oscar Colas and, and some of the internal options at second base. And you're like, you know what? These aren't the splashy moves, but Hey, these are the guys we have. And I think we can get a lot out of them, but you know, it's going to take a little bit of time here. Uh, yeah. You know, so the, so the coaching staff has been finalized. Uh, we, we know about Charlie Montoya. He is your bench coach, former Toronto Blue Jays manager. We, we've known about that. Ethan Katz stays, Kurt Hassler stays, uh, Jose, uh, Castro is your new hitting coach. He has been the assistant hitting coach for the Atlanta Braves for many, many years. Assisting hitting coach for the White Sox is now Chris Johnson, who was with the Charlotte Knights. And a lot of great things coming from Charlotte. I felt like mm -hmm. Gavin Sheets, you know, others like would go down to Charlotte and they'd mm -hmm. unlock something. And they yep. come back to the big league. So I, I'm excited to see what Chris <laughs> Johnson they say, can do. Did they say, hey, you can hit home runs down here if you'd like, if you'd like to. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, really? Down here? I can. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I was told not to uh, in Chicago. I was told to hit, hit you know, ground balls. That, that would be that would be really, really funny uh, if something like that happened of like, actually, this is what you need to do. Just kind of swing on this type of level. Uh, and here's the video I'll show you. Oh, OK. I had I had, uh, you know, our old hitting coach. I was trying to hit the ball down onto the ground <laughs> and uh, and he, he made he said, you know, it would take off in the infield and, you know, they would just rock it through the different huh. holes. So um, you got uh, Eddie Rodriguez is going to be your third base coach. Uh, major league field coordinator, which sounds very official is Mike Tosar, who is with you at Kansas city Royals. We thought maybe he was going to be the hitting coach. There were some rumors about that a few weeks ago. He's got a different role, although he will be involved in, in different aspects of hitting apparently. And then you've got a sports performance role, which is brand new according to Rick Hahn, And that's Jeff head who used to be with the Cincinnati reds, Cincinnati reds in 2022, had the most injured players uh, in all of baseball. Oh, so oh, uh, as soon as the season ended, they fired uh, the, the whole staff, the whole training staff. So why the White Sox? <laughs> Again, like with Clevenger, like, hey, man, we got to get in on Clevenger right away. Why the Sox were like, yes, we're going to create a new position, and we want this man, yeah. the Cincinnati Reds, to he head this up. So, yeah. We want you. We feel yeah. like you'd be uh, a perfect fit. Some untapped, untapped potential with you, sir. Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what happens with that. How does that interview go? Tell me, 
Tell me, uh, tell me your players that you helped. Well, uh, I will say most of them have, are injured currently it's and will the, never uh, be able to play the game again. They're so the, injured. Uh, they can't even move. Yeah, uh, the Kruger smoothing. It's uh, yeah. George Costanza's interview with Kruger smoothing, and Kruger's like going through the resume. There are typos. Costanza is trying to like refresh uh, his different roles, and Kruger's like, ah, I could go either way on you, but we need somebody. <laughs> and uh, maybe that's what happened with uh, Jeff Head here. Um, the one name that uh, is sticking around going to be entering his 11th season as first base coach was brought in originally by Robin Ventura during that era is uh, Daryl Boston. Uh, he will be sticking around. Yeah. I am just, I just can't get this out of my mind of why Daryl Boston on, on solely performance alone is the retained first base coach. And I know people have said to me, it's just first base. What's the big deal? And that's my point. It's first base. It's a throwaway position. He made it look so bad. Let Pedro Grifol bring his own first base coach in, you know? It's like this organization is so hell-bent on at least keeping one or two coaches from every past regime. It's like uh, you can't pick your your pitching coach. It's it's going to be Don Cooper. Don Cooper doesn't matter forever. Doesn't yeah. matter who it is. It wasn't McEwing around for, for a couple of he's he has been in different roles. He was the bench coach at one point. Uh, you know, he's obviously been third base coach and so I, again, but he's, like he's made it through a couple managers though, right? Oh yeah. He, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so he's um, been around. I, it, it's just something about this organization. That's like, yeah, welcome to the team. You're going to be our new manager. Just so you know, we're, we have to keep one person that why I, I don't know. That's what Jerry wants. One person. So you could pick one person from this staff that you have, that you have to keep. And that's the way it goes. And at Boston, maybe he played with Kenny Williams. I got to go back, you know, if they were on the same Sox teams back in the mid to late 80s. And you got to believe there is something between Jerry and Williams of you got to keep Daryl Boston. You got to keep him around. Seems like there's some questionable past, some stuff in his yesteryear, and he's got some skeletons in the closet. I haven't read into too much, but – from the some of the things that people have told me with Boston, and I don't know what's true, what's not, it, it's ugly. Uh, but he's he's still with the White Sox again. I, I don't know what the you know the truth is on any of that stuff, but um, I, you know, I don't know. I, I just he's not going to be he's not going to be in charge of uh base running anymore, from what I understand. <laughs> thank he, he, that, thank that, the Lord that that responsibility is off his shoulders uh but he still will be doing some outfield work so that's oh uh, good well you know uh, he's been fantastic at that the two things that we have completely sucked at over the past uh lifetime uh base running and, and outfield play and uh but you know keep him around again i just him don't and, get him it. and I mean, his head dude will just they're gonna make <laughs> magic together well, again, if people say, well, well, Daryl Boss has got this culture. He creates culture. Well, if you're telling me Tim Anderson's hated and it, it's a it's a rough culture to begin with. I didn't with, say hate it. No, hold on. <laughs> I said that you might not be well liked. Okay. I think there's a difference between right. hated and gotcha. not, not Sorry, well liked. I, I think the the idea there was, Nick, that you know we maybe were under the assumption that this was a very harmonious uh, clubhouse. And I don't know if that's the case. Well, you hear clicks, you hear rumors of clicks and, you know, um, a lot of you can read into some of the comments from Jose Abreu during his press conference. And he feels like he is joining a family. He's happy to be a part of this Astros family and he wants to win. It's like, well, was uh, the White Sox not a good family? And I think it was a good family for him. This was the only family he knew. He yeah. didn't know how to interact almost. It was like, I want to be loyal to you because you brought me in. Like you gave me a contract. You took a chance on me. I want to, you know, do this for Jerry and for the city of Chicago and, and, and you know, all this stuff. But man, I, I just, the honeymoon was well over. And after that 2019 contract, he was like, hey, they're going to set me up. They're going to surround me with people. I'm sure of it. I need help here. I got to do this. I can't do this on my own. I want to get to a World Series. I want to do this for the Sox. But come on, spend the money. Like, let's do this. We're so close. And it was not done. And, and I think he saw that. And, and yeah. hey, if, if the Sox offered him a deal and he's saying that it was a fair deal, I want to know when was that offered. 
you know, because we were hearing whispers by, uh, you know, the White Sox whisperer, Bob Nightingale, a while ago that they were going to let Abreu walk. So was there something in midseason, like verbally, like, hey, here's this deal you might want to think about, you know? Yeah. And if the, and if that was the case, then the Sox have money. Do they not? Mm-hmm. Okay, do they not have money to well, spend now? Uh, that's again. <laughs> they have money. Let's let's again. The, the, the Chicago White Sox, if they wanted to, could spend money. This is the, the, one of the largest markets in baseball. It they have revenue restrictions. They, they get they get revenue sharing from the other teams. You know, your owner owns another professional team. He is worth a ton of money. Now, NBC Sports doesn't, Chicago TV yeah, deals. He, you know. he, it doesn't mean he has the liquid, right? It doesn't mean that he's got sure. that money just sitting around, uh, you know, under his under his couch. But is that a Scrooge McDuck situation? Is what you're saying? He's well, the, I maybe not. Maybe not a Scrooge McDuck, but don't. And I wouldn't recommend diving into a a pile <laughs> of gold coins. That, that cannot be good for your body. It wouldn't be as smooth as they showed on the program. No, not just TV splashing and this. No, 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 um, no, no. Don't do that. They again. They could spend money. This is. They just choose. I choose not to run. <laughs> as, as, like Jerry Seinfeld famously said, uh-huh. I choose not to yep. run, yep. and I choose not to spend the money. Why? Mm-hmm. I, I have no idea. I don't why. have to give you a reason. I no. I, only I need to know that. No, um, and the, and Daryl Boston will forever be the first base coach. Two oh, things well, you can always Lord. set your watch to. I, I, somebody asked me the other day, Nick, because you know I uh, introduced myself. It was an, a potential new uh, you know partner of ours. Oh, at, at, all right. You know, trying to trying to work some deals here, mm-hmm. and you know, use friendly banter. What do you do? What do you like to do? And and I talked about this podcast and this yeah. show. And he's in he's uh, stationed in in Texas, and he goes, "Boy, what do you talk about?" You know, on that show. Mm-hmm. And I said, you, "You'd be amazed at how much we can complain for forty five minutes. It's a, it's amazing what White Sox fans can do. There's always something yeah. going on and something to talk about, and it amazes me that in December." We're, uh, we've spent 42 minutes talking about where this team could go and we still have no answers, but maybe yeah. this week will provide differently for us. Maybe there'll be some, I, I some, you know, a, a door that is open and you go, okay, this is the direction they're going. Maybe they'll land something. Maybe they'll, you know, maybe th- they'll be rumored in something that doesn't materialize now, but like you mentioned, will be something that happens down the line. I don't know. But it'll be an exciting week nonetheless. And I, I believe that you're taking the good guys talk back out, you know, plane out to mm-hmm. San Diego and getting there in the morning to make sure you are there yeah. to report on any wheelings and dealings, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, of course. Uh, I, I will be there for the buffet. Uh, that is uh, my promise to you. Yeah, it's uh, it should be very eventful. I'm sure we'll hear all kinds of, uh, you know, bullish statements. And, uh, you know, I think. We could potentially see folks uh, getting back to different custom levels here and there. Um, I, uh, I hey, if something big gets done this week, that's great. I just know they have to. They have to figure this out if you're going to look to be competitive. Uh, it, I should say in the American League, uh, I think they're going to be competitive in the AL Central, but you, you need to get back to your winning ways. You get a, you got to get back to some mini, a little bit of dominance that we saw in 2021. And that gets you got to get serious. You yeah. have to get serious about some positions. You you rehabbed the coaching staff. You got the manager in that you think. Come on, there's a couple things out there that can be done uh, to to help this uh, move forward for sure. Well, and let's be honest, Nick. If if they made one, possibly two, I don't even want to say like ultra splashy moves, but some really solid moves. Uh, you know, not even if it's this week or not. You know, we have a completely different outlook on this team because then we kind of, again, revert back to where we were a year ago and going, okay, now I can kind of see where this is going. That that hole's been plugged there. And, you know, let's kind of go back and start that hoping and wishing and praying that these guys, you know, play up to their potential again. And and maybe, you know, just maybe that that log jam at first that they've had, that's been relieved a little bit. Maybe an Andrew Vaughn will pan out to way that we thought he would hit on a regular basis because he's more comfortable playing every day at first base. And, and he takes that into the batter's box now. 
And maybe that, you know, alleviates the DH position. And it really is Gavin Sheets. And we have found our left-handed power. You can We can talk ourselves into some really positive discussion if we can maybe make one or two really solid moves over the next, you know, you know, several weeks, obviously throughout winter, but something happens this week, then we're maybe having a different conversation next Sunday. Yeah. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, focus and uh, strategy can be shifted quickly. Um, yeah. I, this past week uh, on lockdown, uh, I had a uh, host of the lockdown Padres. We had a really interesting conversation, Javier Reyes and Mike Clevenger, and he said similar things to what you were referencing uh, from, you know, potentially a, a new rapper uh, partnership uh, in your world. He kind of said, like, look, what, what are what do the White Sox do? Like, what? Why do they not spend money? Why are they acting like a small team? Like and, and I just was gushing over what the Padres do. You know, like we mm-hmm. sit as Sox fans, just look at you guys and your wheelings and dealings. And, you know, and he almost was just said, like, you know, we let Clevenger go pretty much because we'll go get something else. Like we've mm-hmm. got other things available. Like that's too many question marks. We'll, we'll figure something out. Like they're in on Trey Turner. Apparently they might move Tatis Jr. To the outfield. Obviously we all know about the Juan Soto deal that went down. Uh, where has that gotten them? Not to the promised land, but they had an exciting season and, yeah. and that, and that fan base got a taste of the, the postseason. And, I just figure, you know, there's more to come. Uh, yeah, it, it's that. nice to be a fan. It would be nice to be a fan of a team that is always like in try mode rather than uh, maybe have like a half-hearted effort and then it didn't work, so we're going to peel it back for about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Wouldn't that be just we gotta, amazing? We've got to lick our wounds for a while here. Before yeah, we, we have to. Whew, man, that uh, – that yeah. one uh, playoff appearance, that was a lot for us. We need to sit <laughs> back, a have a cigarette, and <laughs> relax for a little bit. Hey, Nick, we, we have a yeah. little time left, not yeah. much time, but I yeah. wanted to give you an opportunity to talk yeah. about you were featured uh, in, a, yeah. in a Tribune article, sure. and, and you've yeah. been, uh, you know, a lot of people mm-hmm. retweeting it and a lot of oh, yeah. nice things said. So just, yeah. I, just walk us through that. What what can we expect uh, if we haven't had a chance to read it yet? What did you talk about, and, mm. and what was that experience like? Well, yeah, the, uh, a wonderful uh, per, Shakia uh, Taylor. Um, she's a columnist for the Chicago Tribune. She she reached out to folks just kind of like a cattle call about a month ago. Was just looking for some diehard Sox fans and, and Cub fans to do a an article on just where Chicago baseball is right now with these two teams, dead of winter. And I thought it was uh, probably a smart thing to do it tied in with winter meetings. Uh, The digital article came out a few days ago. I think it was Thursday or Friday uh, online subscribers and all that stuff. Uh, And the print, it was in Chicago's uh, Tribune Sunday paper, front page of the sports section. It was awesome. And, you know, she, you know, peppered me with typical questions that I think someone would ask of a Sox fan. And, you know, some of it stemmed from 2022 and, and what happened and why it happened and what my thoughts are about this organization moving forward. What do I think the White Sox can do to kind of get the fan base back, get them excited? Uh, Questions about Grafol. And look, I mean, I don't think I said anything earth shattering. If you've been listening to this podcast and you listen to Lockdown White Sox regularly, hey, I don't, I truly don't believe things will really change the way we want them to as Sox fans until there's new ownership. Um, I am continually disappointed in their lack of spending premium money on, on premium talent and really answering uh, these 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 needs that they have had. Second base, DH, right fielder, for example, that they have been trying to figure out for multiple years in these, you know, band-aids and chewing gum and paperclip situations, namely guys like Nomar, you know, Mazzara, Edwin Encarnacion, like stop all of that, like really go after it. Um, I, I was disappointed that the Sox had an opportunity, Pat, uh, a window, a serious window where they could have been the team of the city. And, and the Cubs look like hey, they've got talent. They're, they're young. And I think they, but they know that they've got a good core and it just sounds like they're ready to spend too. Um, they're ready to make some, some big moves here this off season and, and we'll see what happens. Uh, but I feel like, Oh, 
we were just there. Weren't we just there as Sox fans a couple of years ago? We were there. I wish we were, we, we were there again, you know, young, excited, ready to spend money to make a move. Um, and then, you know, look, I, I thought I'm fine with Pedro Grafol. I was not blown away by it. Uh, I, I think it's, you know, it could be a step in the right direction. I think the coaching staff now that we know is, is it's surrounding him with success. We've got guys that he's familiar with that they're, they've had success in other organizations like Castro with the Braves. Um, but after doing a, a, an exhaustive search for the first times in, in forever, and you had eight people in and you had maybe 30 people on your list. And, and this is the guy you land on. I wish it was somebody that had more recent success. If you're not going to go with somebody that used to be a former manager get somebody from, you know, the Rays organization. Why not Quattraro? I'm assuming Espada was told, listen, stick with us for another year or so. You're going to be the heir apparent to Dusty Baker and look at what you have to work with. Mm -hmm. Look at the, look at the resources here. Um, so, Hey, I, you know, I think hiring the manager was the easy part. Now it's the hard part. Now, now it's, now it's filling out the roster. Now it's really, uh, talking the, talking the talk, you're walking the walk, all that kind of stuff. You, you got to do it this off season, you know, because if he says the culture, everything starts spring training, you know, mid February, uh, you don't want to be trying to figure out where these other holes, like, figure it out now. Yeah. You know, this is the time to do it. So, well, that's uh, really proud of you. Good for you for, for being, uh, you know, it's not every day that somebody gets on the, 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 the back page of the sports section, front page, uh, front yeah, page. Front page. But, well, you know, what is the term? Isn't it like there's a, there's a front page of the paper, but the back mm -hmm. page is the sports section. Well, so the that, back page uh, of, of, that's the I, sun times. That's, that's the, oh, sun oh, times. Oh, 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 uh, oh, and, and I think uh, I, it's been a while since I've read a paper. Obviously, Pat, I'm really ashamed of you because you and I, we, we went You're to, ashamed of me. we, wow, we went to, that, that no, well, deep. listen, we, we, we both went to college uh, in mass com and we came up in journalism and, mm -hmm. and radio. Oh, yeah. I just thought you'd be a paper boy. You'd be oh, always well, reading the papers. No, and, uh, I, I just, might, uh, I might subscribe to a Shanahan Gazette tomorrow then. You never know. <laughs> I need you to be reading some sort of paper. Uh, just get back to your roots. Uh, if you reading will, is, is something. If someone will read it to me. In fact, whenever I do get a chance to read this article, read it to uh, I'm I'll, you know what? To... I've got the article. Can... I will read it to you. I Can you? you That's Read week. it to me. That's the, the next episode is you just reading <laughs> uh, to me. That's going to be fantastic. Uh, and this is going to raise subscriptions by the yeah, tens, I believe. Yeah. So oh, good absolutely. for the Tribune. Well, paper's back, baby, and uh, oh, yeah. news, newspaper's back. Uh, it starts now. No, I appreciate you making mention of it. It's a cool opportunity, and uh, look, I hope I did White Sox fans uh, well, and just I, I wanted to have uh, – I wanted to bring voice to the fan base. You know, it's like if, if we're going to – have uh, a perspective, I, I just – I'll throw my name in the hat always. I, there or you in go. The ring, Good I for say. you. I, so. Good job. Yep. Proud of you. Um, well, Pat, I, I appreciate that, sir. And uh, we'll see what happens this week. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, – you hear these rumors. I'll be following closely. And, again, something might get started, but it might not get done till later later on but always a pleasure pat talking white Sox with you my friend yeah i can't wait to record next week and see what else you can be disappointed about me for so <laughs> looking forward to it read a paper this week please and then <laughs> okay. report back on it all right uh, folks thank you so much for helping us kick off season five of the good guys talk back uh, podcast you can find this podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcast and on YouTube, we've got a YouTube channel. We're on Twitter at Good Guys TV. We've got a Facebook uh, fan page. Hopefully, these conversations, uh, you know, head back to people in your world, friends, family, coworkers, uh, spread the word about this uh, fan centric White Sox podcast. We do appreciate it. For Pat Hester, I am Nick Murawski. Until next time, go Sox.